Hi everybody, Ian Bremer here around your world in 180 seconds. I have your questions lined up right here on my phone as I always do and we're ready to go. Number one, is Netanyahu losing the PR battle amid public outrage over the IDF strike killing seven aid workers? I think Israel is losing the information war around the world, um, not just with the Global South, which was certainly true a few months ago, but increasingly even with Israel's closest allies. I'm hearing from the Germans, from the French, um, you know, from the Canadians, from the United States, uh, that uh, there is uh, really a lot of upset uh, with the uh, unwillingness to take far greater care um, about uh, civilian casualties while the Israelis are enga engaging in massive airstrikes still across Gaza. And of course, especially um, if we see strikes into Rafah, where well over a million Palestinians uh, are trying to shelter. Uh, this is a big problem uh, for the Israelis. It's a big problem for Netanyahu, uh, but no end in sight right now. And the potential for the war to escalate continues to be very, very real. What's needed to garner bipartisan support for Speaker Mike Johnson's bill for increased Ukraine aid? Uh, we have bipartisan support. There is uh, overwhelming majority support among Democrats and Republicans to pass aid for Ukraine likely 60 billion could be structured as a loan doesn't really matter it's not like anyone believes the ukrainians will be in a position to pay it off anytime soon makes it more palatable for trump supporters who have heard the former president say not one more dime in direct foreign aid has to all be structured as loans in case we don't like them in the future then they have to pay it back what if they can't who knows but anyway that's the the structure the point is uh, that the ukrainians who have continue to be able to mostly hold their defensive lines. They've lost some territory recently, in part because they don't have enough troops on the ground. They are pushing through more mobilization, but also because they don't have enough artillery, enough ammunition, enough military equipment. And that is coming, some from the Europeans, more soon from the Americans this month. I suspect the next couple weeks that happens. Finally, what's the significance of Turkey's recent local elections setback for President Erdogan's government. It is, uh, it's the first time in a couple decades since Erdogan took power that his party uh, did not win. They didn't get a majority um, and instead it was the opposition. Uh, and that's a big deal, even though it's municipal elections. Look, it doesn't mean the end of Erdogan. He doesn't have to stand for presidential elections, no parliamentary elections until 2028. So it's quite a while, but um, it does show that elections matter in a country like Turkey as much as Erdogan would like them not to. Uh, and it is mostly about lack of comfort with his government's performance on the economy. A lot more pressure to perform adequately. And the mayor of Istanbul is an erstwhile serious challenger to the Turkish president. So, I mean, his ability to change the constitution and consolidate more power uh, his ability to ensure that his party is going to be in control after 2028 has just gone down quite a bit. And that means he has to be more careful, more cautious, and more focused on performing on the economy for his own people. That's it for me. And I'll talk to you all real soon.